Father, thank you for the covenant of divine health that I have as a child of God. I declare that I am redeemed from the curse, sickness, disease, and the COVID-19 virus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus permeates every cell in my body and has made me free from the law of sin and death. Lord, thank you for sending your word and healing me and delivering me from destruction. I declare that every disease, germ, and virus that tries to attack my body dies instantly. Every cell of my body is virus-free and full of life. My immune system is strong and continuously quickened with the life of God. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus over myself and my family and declare that no weapon formed against our health shall prosper. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High and I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Lord, you are my refuge and fortress and in you I trust. There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague, disease, or virus come nigh my dwelling because I have made the Lord my habitation. You have given your angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. You will deliver me and honor me and with long life you will satisfy me and show me your salvation in Jesus name. Could I What's up, everybody? My name is Brandon Hill, and I'm so excited today to tell you about our eCampus experience. Even though we're not together, God still loves to see us honoring Him at our homes or wherever we are. So before we head into praise and worship or start listening to what the man of God has for us tonight, I'd like to give you three things on how to better attain this best online experience. Number one, stay engaged. I know since we're at home, it is so easy with, to become distracted. But let's be clear, Satan does not want us to get into the Word of God, period. So before service starts, get rid of any distractions. And ask the Holy Spirit to help me focus on what Pastor has for me tonight. And I think that will help you out a lot. Number two, be a participator. I mean, just because we're not at the church building doesn't mean you can't participate wherever you are. So go ahead and participate by singing and dancing along. And also it helps stir the faith that's on the inside of you. Number three, last but not least, 
share, 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 and repost. I mean, it's amazing on how God uses us to spread the gospel around to people who really need it. And let's be real, all of us need the word of God, especially during these times. So again, share, 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 and repost. And uh, that's it for me. So if you're ready, let's do it. Praise. Come on, sing it. I lift my hands. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. Shut down to you. You reign on the throne. For you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Is that your prayer this morning? Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing it again all over the room. Come on, sing with us. I live. I lift my hands in total. That's right, you can lift that hand and in total adoration unto him. Because he reigns on the throne. And he's God and God alone. Anybody glad about that? Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more. Come on, let's sing it. Love me in your arms. Love me in your heart. You are my shelter. You are my shelter from the storm. When all my friends were when gone. All my friends were gone. Guess what? You were right there all you along. Right Has he been there for alone. you? I've never known. I've never but known. Quiet as Salem. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. Come on, say, just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you more than Lord, anything. I love you Anybody love him? Anybody love him? Come on, sing it again. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love Jesus. I worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. More than anything. More than anything. Come on and lift your voices and sing it. I love Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Come on, say, I worship and I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love 
Hallelujah. Well, praise God tonight. Praise God tonight for this opportunity that we have to share in the Word of God tonight so that we can grow, grow by the Word, and grow in a way that is sustainable and uh, that will give us results that we're looking for out of life. Come on, let's pray together. Father, we love you and we thank you. We glorify you and give you all the praise for such a phenomenal life that we get to live here on this planet called Earth. And so, Father, we glorify you and praise you for all that we will share in your word tonight and all that we will receive from your word tonight. So we glorify you for it. We thank you for it. We bless you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Amen. All right, so we are talking about a shift. That is that we are returning together and expecting greater. We're returning together and expecting greater. Uh, based on definition, a shift is a slight change in position, direction, and tendency. A shift, again, a shift is a slight change in position, direction, or tendency. I mean, we all are experiencing some level of a shift in our lives during this, this season and uh, because that we are experiencing some slight change in our position, our direction, and our tendency, it's so important for us to regain our footing. You know, before COVID showed up on the scene, uh, many of us as Christians had real good quality footing and um, we knew what our uh, priorities were, we knew where we were headed, we knew what our goals were, we knew what our objectives to achieve those goals were located, and when COVID came on the scene, especially during the time when we were under a shutdown, a lot of that was um, thrown off base. And so now we find ourselves almost a year and a half later uh, trying to uh, grapple with the changes that, that have taken place. And uh, so I, I really wanted to, during this, this month, to really address that and uh, to see if we could get our, our footing back, get ourselves back in right position so that we could continue to uh, hear from God like we had been hearing from God before. And I think that it's, it's so important to always be able to hear from God because there are going to be times in our lives when we're, we're absolutely just not going to know what to do. And uh, because we're not going to know what to do, we need to be able to hear from God even when it's cluttered, even when it's, when it's stopped, even when it's, you know, we're at a place of uh, non-communication and a place like Lodabar, a place of non-communication, a place of lack less than and sometimes insufficient, but we still need to be able to hear from God and we need to be able to hear him with, with, uh, with clarity. And so last week and the week before, week before I talked about how we need to shift in our perspective. Last week we talked about shifting in our position. And tonight we're going to talk about shifting in our priorities. Okay, so it's important for each area of our life, our perspective, our position, and our priorities that we work on these things, that, that they're not just going to happen. It's, it's like the fruit of the Spirit. You know, uh, the fruit of the Spirit takes development. You have, to, you have to really attend to it and cultivate it in a way that uh, you're putting right work and effort into it uh, so that you can get right outcomes. Paul said it like this, that, that we should grow in grace, but not only that, but uh, where salvation is concerned that you know, we should work out our soul salvation. And I think that when trying to explain the work out of our salvation, I'm not talking about working to be saved. I'm talking about already saved and now the, uh, cutting away the chaff out of your life so that you can build out a, a uh, greater and uh, more mature relationship uh, with God. That is so important, especially when you, you, when you and I start talking about shifting 
and, and, and moving about trying to relocate good quality footing, okay? All right, so pros uh, uh, we shifted our perspective, we shifted our position, now tonight we're going to shift in our priorities, okay? All right, so what is a priority? A priority is a thing, a thing that is regarded as more important than another. Again, priority is a thing that is regarded as more important than another, okay? Now, again, as, as we have experienced this season of uh, the pandemic, uh, a lot of things have been knocked around in our lives, and uh, so I know if, if you're like me, you just kind of grab what, what is standing. You grab what is firm, and it may be in priority. It may be out without priority. Um, it may be in place. It may not even be uh, in place at all, but we grab hold of whatever we can to try to survive and uh, keep ourselves in right standing and relationship with God. But I believe that as a time that, like now, that we should uh, start uh, putting things and, and, and arranging things in a way that we have right perspective. So tonight's lesson will be fundamental, as always, fundamental, simple enough. I hope that you'll be able to grasp these concepts, spiritual concepts, that'll be able to help you to be able to write correct and reorganize your life in, in under uh, right prioritizing, okay? All right, so uh, when we start talking about prioritizing, I think one of the most important scriptures is found over in Mark chapter number eight, verse, verse 36 and 37, and the other gospels uh, record the same uh, uh, statement here. Mark eight, verse 36, 37 says, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Verse 37, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Now notice what he says. What is it going to profit a man that we gain the whole world and lose our soul? Or what shall we give in exchange for our soul? Meaning, meaning the, 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 when we start talking about prioritizing, we have to be very, very careful about um, trying to put things before our relationship with God. Now, that's, that's important. Now, I don't, I don't know uh, what shakeups uh, happened during this COVID, uh, COVID pandemic for you and your life and your relationship with God, but I just simply believe that if something in your life has been placed before God, it's time to right correct that. Many of us experienced uh, loss of loved ones during COVID, and just the hurt and the pain of that can shift things in your life in a way that you can prioritize and put things even before God. Some of us lost uh, jobs during the uh, pandemic that uh, even in that, the lack of uh, resources, financial resources can uh, make you put, uh, trying to get two or three jobs to make ends meet. Uh, before God and so there's so many things in our lives that have shifted you know wh whereas relationships I can go there with marriages and even seriously dating relationships that broke up during the pandemic and now you're grappling in the, within the confines of relationships trying to find footing and all of that is Im important and is important for your well-being and your sanity but nothing ever comes before your relationship with an almighty and loving God. And I think that when you and I grab hold of that and we embrace that, then we get the right results that we're looking for out of our relationship, both with God and both with human beings. That's so important to, to understand that. So what shall it profit, man, if you gain all the money in the world if you gain all the relationships in the world, if you gain all the perfect health in the world and turn around and lose your soul. So right perspective, right priority says that I've got to be anchored in God first. So I don't know where you are tonight. I don't know where you are in your relationship with God, but it is time now to put God first and foremost in your life. And when you do that, you are now starting to organize your life back to a place where you really, really realize that without God, I absolutely cannot do anything. 
The Bible declares that he is, Jesus is the vine, we are the branches, and without him we can do absolutely nothing. Our connection to the vine is what supplies life and gives us life eternally. And so grabbing hold of that and, and repenting of whatever we put at the top of our lives in the, in, the, in, in the arrangement of our priorities is important to repent of that, turn from that, and put God back into right perspective. The scripture that is um, uh, most anchored in God first, that's letter B, Letter, letter, letter A is uh, how we have to shift our priorities. And so now is letter B, God first. Point number two, God first. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 says this, God first. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, the last part of the verse says all these things, and if you read up above Verse 33, you'll see God talking about, hey, I took care of this person, I've taken care of that, I've taken care of the ravens, I've taken care of this, I've taken care of all of my creation, and don't you even think not one time that I won't take care of you. Now, seek ye first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, and as a result, everything you need in life will be added unto you. Now, that's, that's profound and that's powerful because, again, things have shifted. Things have, have, have uh, shifted since last season, and we're trying to find a good place to land in this thing. And because of that, it's so important for us to realize that we have to seek God first and seek God's righteousness, his provision of right standing with God, his provision. What is that? Jesus Christ, his son. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is what, at, at what has made us right with God through his death at Calvary, his resurrection from the borrowed tomb, and him now sitting at the right hand of the Father is what has made us and given us access to the righteousness of God the Father. And it's up to us to receive that righteousness. And by doing so, we put God first. We put God first first we put God first now the thing about putting God first is that most of us who uh, might uh, get an opportunity to examine the lives of others we really don't know if God's first in your life we see you doing some spiritual calisthenics but we really don't know if God is first in your life only God will know the intentions of the heart only God will know the intentions of the heart and only God will be able to reveal the intentions of the heart so with mouth service, as the old church would say, with lip service, you know, we talk about, you know, oh, yeah, I love the Lord, and, and I'm really with God, and I'm on God's team, and God's on my team. But really in the genuineness, in our soul being and in our heart being, we, we have God in third place rather than in first place. Yeah. So if in your life right now you're lacking anything, check out where do you have God in, in the level of priorities in your life. God has to be numero uno, number one in your life. When you put God first, all these things, everything that you and I desire out of life, every outcome we desire out of life, all these things shall be added unto you. Glory be to God. I like it because it's important for all of us to understand that we want great outcomes out of life. And then the scriptures is telling us how to gain these great outcomes out of life. And it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and God's way of doing things and absolutely everything that we need to do this good life will be added unto us. God first. God first. God first. That's so important when we start talking about prioritizing our life. Put God first in actions and in deeds and not only in action and deeds, but put it in lip service. Lip service is great. Say it to all kinds of people, but actions and deeds are more important than the lip service. Praise God. So, number three. Then after we place God in proper perspective, that God is top priority, and we understand that, that nothing is 
going to be above God. My relationship, your relationship with God means more to you, more to me than anything on the planet. Now we can start putting things into place like secondly, let us see, family. That family is second. That God first, God first, and then family is second. In Matthew chapter number 10, verse 37 through 40, Jesus deals with this in terms of him uh, or God in our lives versus family in our lives. There are some people that go about doing life in a way that they are really all in to their job, they're really all in to their ministry, they're really all in to their purpose, and they're all in to these things that do bring joy and fulfillment out of life, but those things that bring joy and fulfillment out of life might be out of order where priority is concerned. And so it's so important to realize God first. Now let's see what's second, and I believe that family, according to the scriptures, is the thing that is, that is, sam is, is uh, second, okay? All right, Matthew chapter 10, verse 37 through 40 says, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Now that, hey, that is a heavy statement, especially now that you and I are born again. See, we got born again not knowing that scripture. So that scripture now has to come alive in us and it has to, it has to help us to prioritize, right? That not only did I hear that scripture, but now how can I do it? How can I do it? How can I do the A part of verse number 37? He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth his son or his daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Verse 38, and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. I love this. I love this. And the reason why I love it is because God, through Jesus Christ, his son, is speaking to us so that you and I might know what priorities look like. God first. He that loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. In other words, when we put other people above our relationship with God, then we do not qualify for the love of God. So in order to turn toward God and turn toward God in a, in a right way where your relationship is concerned, we have to put people in proper perspective. God first, then comes mother, father, spouse, uh, children, uh, all of that is, now I want you to understand this. God is not saying that we shouldn't love our parents, shouldn't love our children. He's saying don't put them above the relationship that you have with me. A lot of times, you know, during pandemics and, and sickness and disease, we, we blame God. God did this to my child or God did this to my parents. And again, a lot of, uh, a lot of people have lost parents during this pandemic. A lot of people have lost children during this pandemic, but we cannot blame God. This is, I believe that it's so important for all of us to understand that this is human conditions. What we're dealing with in this pandemic is human conditions. It's not a God condition, it's human condition. In other words, humans brought these things about that are happening to us uh, as we deal with this pandemic now. It's not a God problem. God has already dealt with COVID-19. It's our responsibility to deal with it in a human way so that we can uh, finally conquer it and move on into this uh, new phase of life. Here it is. God says, do not put family before me. Don't put family before me. Make me top priority. If you put family before me, you're not worthy of me. You're not worthy of my all that comes along with the benefits package of being, being saved. Okay, verse 39 says this. He that findeth his life shall lose it. I love this because it, it kind of puts things in perspective. It, it, it starts you off with your parents. Don't put them before me. Then it goes to your children. Don't put them before me. And then watch this. Don't even put your own life. Don't even consider your own life, your own well-being before me. Now that's powerful. That's profound. Yeah. Because a lot of people will say, well, okay, it's, it's easy for me to shift my parents in the right perspective. It's easy for me to shift my children in the right perspective, but I am going to make sure that I survive some me, that I have some me, some, some Stephen or whatever your name is, left out of my life. And that in and of itself 
causes us now to enter into some level of pride and to put ourselves above God being top priority in our, li in our lives. This world that we live in today, the world that, uh, uh, that we're growing up in, as our, as our young people are growing up in, and those who are adults as we're maturing out in, this is a very, very selfish, self-centered world that we're living in. And oftentimes, nobody is first except that person put themselves first on the pinnacle of their own lives. Yeah, yeah. This is the breaking point. This shift, I believe, is a breaking point for a lot of Christians who are so self-centered. If they're not in, in authority over their own lives, then they will absolutely not allow God to be the final authority over their lives. That's pride. And the Bible declares that pride cometh just before the fall. Yeah, pride will come. In other words, if, if you see that person falling off the pinnacle of life, it's a result of them having their own authority and their own final authority over their own lives. As Christians, our responsibility is to make God and put God first and as a result of that, God now becomes our final and top priority in our lives. So he that findeth his life shall lose his life. To find life, you lose your life. You now are no longer final authority of your life. You've resigned from that position. That no longer am I the final authority of my life, but God is the final authority over my life. And so again, Many people will say, well, I, I can, my mom and my daddy, I'm good with moving them around. My children, I'm good with that. But when it comes to me, I'm going to run me. I'm going to run my life. And ain't nobody going to tell me how to do my life. And that's, and that's the way a lot of Christians live their lives. Not even God can speak into their lives. They send man, man of God, a woman of God, send a prophet, send an apostle, send a pastor, teacher, send a five-fold ministry gift, send a, send a friend, Send a co-worker. God sends all kinds of people with messages for the individual. But because that individual is the reigning authority over their lives, they cannot hear God. Here it is. If you want to find your life, you have to lose it. You have to lose it. You have to lose your life in order to find it. And what does that mean? You have to allow God to be top priority in your life in order to find your life. Okay? Verse 40 says this. He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Praise God. Praise God. All right. So uh, as a result, as, as a result of, of family being second in our lives, we have to put family in right perspective, right? So we know that the scripture tells us that if you're married, then your spouse becomes your top priority. We know that. We know what the scripture says, okay? Uh, I think that's Ephesians 5 and then uh, one scripture that I have tonight over in Colossians chapter 3 uh, will share with us what that looks like. Your spouse first, okay? All right, then after your spouse comes your children, okay? And then after your children comes your, your parents, of course. And then you know, after your parents, maybe your siblings. And, you know, it kind of goes based on your own discretion after that. Uh, the scripture doesn't really speak to uh, siblings, so kind of, you know, you kind of got to put them in proper perspective after that. Um, but then there comes uh, our careers and our purposes in life and uh, uh, what we believe that is God's uh, mission and mandate on our lives. And all of that's got to be prioritized. But the most important is God, then comes your spouse, then comes your children, and of course, there comes your, your parents, okay? That's so important. The scripture does speak to these. And I want to share a scripture with you over in 1 Timothy chapter number 5, verse 1 through 8. And during this, this shift, there's, a, again, I keep, I keep uh, speaking to this tonight, that there's a lot of uh, parental care that has to be given. A lot of parental care that has to be given. There's a lot of uh, spousal care that has to be given during this uh, pandemic. And there's a lot of... Uh, uh, chill, uh, 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 parenting care that, that, that you have to give to your child. And a lot of this care is, is not in a physical way. A lot of it is psychologically. A lot of it is emotionally. Uh, a lot of it is spiritually. Um, and, and which is taxing on a relationship when it comes down to human beings. It's taxing. It's taxing that, you know, our parents had to stay in the house for almost a year, a year and so, 
and it's taxing that even now they've got to be careful about who they spend time with and we have to kind of guard them and, and help them and, and all of that is taxing and it will wear us absolutely out and I know as Christians this is a, this is a place a lot of us are in that we're wore out we're all wore out praying for people we're wore out standing in agreement with people we're wore out with helping people physically to navigate these troubled waters and, and because of that we, that's why we got to have right relationship with God first because God is the one that will renew our strength and help us to mount up on wings of eagles run and not be weary walk and not faint only God can provide that kind of a rejuvenation that we'll need during these these times and this is the shift that we prioritize God first and then we put our if you're married your spouse if not you know you single person if you don't have children it would be your parents you you and I have a responsibility to other human beings we have a responsibility to them and that's so important so vitally important okay all right so let's look at first Timothy chapter 5 verse 1 through 8 now there's uh, more to this so you can read uh, a little bit further into this in first Timothy chapter 5 and continue on reading but I brought for this lesson just verse 1 through 8 here he is rebuke not an elder but entreat him as your father and the younger men as brethren and the elder women as mothers the younger as sisters with all purity now verse 3 honor widows that are widows indeed but if any widow have children or nephews let them learn first to show piety that is reverence honor at home got that and to to requiet that is to return a favor to someone in other words uh, uh let me finish reading it to to, and to require, that is to return favor to someone that is their parents. It says to require your parents. And what does that mean? It means to return a favor to them, meaning they cared for you. They made the investment in your life that it becomes now our responsibility as Christians to, re, to, to return that favor as well. And again, I know it can be taxing, it can be tiresome, but this is what we, uh, as 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 as, as I like to say at this point in our lives, we signed up for this. How did I sign up, Pastor? Just b virtue by being their child, by being brought into the world, and by virtue of them taking care of us. That you and I had, had years of nurturing from the very time that we were born all the way up through our 20s. Our parents uh, uh, nurtured us and showed us and and impart it into us. And you say, well, Pastor, what my parent? Well, whoever that, that significant person was in your life, if they're still living right now during this pandemic, you should be checking on them. You should be investing in, in and going by and, and uh, finding out if they need something and if it's nothing but door dashing them, different meals, and, and if it's, you know, uh, making sure that they can get to the doctor. All of that is so important. I'm talking about right priority right priority right investment in these relationships that God wants us to have we, it's time to shift and really really make sure we care for those that are of our household listen to what it says he says for that it is good and acceptable before God that we uh, when someone is a widow we care for them especially that they have children and they have uh, nephews to be sure that you engage and then verse 5 says now she that is a widow indeed and desolate and truth and trusteth in God and continues in supplication and prayers not in day but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth then verse 7 and these things give give in charge that that they may be uh, blameless and then verse 8 says this listen carefully but if any provide not for his own especially for those of his own house. He hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, Paul is saying this to Timothy. He says, they set these things in order and charge the people and make it a blameless statement among you that is being fulfilled with people around them that they shift their priority toward people in their lives that have made investments in their lives and make sure that they're good to these people because 
if a person cannot and will not take care of the people in their own house, they are worse than an infidel. Yeah, this is where our priorities have to be. God first, then comes our families. Well, what does that family portion look like? Again, if you're married, your spouse, then your children, then your parents. Got it? And it, the scripture even goes on to, to aunties. Yeah. And then what is it saying? It's saying that people who have played a significant role in your life, you and I have to return the investment. He uses the word here, required, which, is, which, which simply means to return a favor that someone gave to you early on in your life. I love it. I love it. This helps us to write correct as we shift. It helps us to shift where our priorities are concerned. Reevaluate your priorities. When I came up as a young person, my mom used to say, boy, your, your priorities are out of order. Even now, when I hear that statement, it shakes you to your bones to hear that you're doing something in life, but then when someone evaluates where you are and what you're doing, they say to you, your priorities are are out of order. Now, that's my challenge to you tonight. My challenge to you tonight is to write correct, reevaluate. It is a time of reevaluation so that you and I can get things back in right priority and right perspective so that we can carry out God's will for our lives. All right, last thing I'll say to you tonight. Not only do we have a priority where our families are concerned, but our next priority, our third priority is by vision and purpose vision and purpose our third priority is vision and purpose now i mentioned this early on in the lesson tonight that sometimes and especially during the pandemic people have placed the uh their vision and their purpose above god because they want to achieve and and man it's been a year and so and and then, you know that was one of the big big gripes during the p pandemic uh, uh very early on was that businesses were failing People that put their life savings in the businesses and people that invested all of their energy and their sweat equity in the businesses and they were failing because people were not coming to frequent their businesses and people were simply saying, I, I, I need to in, uh, continue to invest in my vision and my plan and my purpose in life and, and not willing to be able to put on the brakes and just say, listen, to save humankind, vision don't really mean much right now. Purpose really doesn't mean much right now. And, 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 and to flip that in the lives of people right now is very, very tough because people are trying to make a living. People are trying to stay ahead, even in the middle of a pandemic, and they're trying to find ways to do so. But you cannot put vision and purpose ahead of God, and you can't put it ahead of your family. Now, I said enough right there to be able to save a lot of people from destroying their own lives and destroying their own families. That is so important that you put things in right perspective. Listen, vision and purpose will be there tomorrow. And I want you to hear this. God will always give you enough vision and purpose, but he'll always, if God gives you vision, he will always give you provision. You'll never ever be able to run out once God gives you the vision. Matter of fact, during this time of pandemic, you ought to be on the increase. If God gave you vision, he will always give you provision. Always remember that. That's, that's so key to understanding how to navigate and to shift your priorities. I know, I know it, you may be feeling anxiety about your vision and, you, and your purpose, and you may be a little overwhelmed in this, but listen, that's why we have God at the top of the priority chart. That's why we have him there, so that we can always be pointing toward him you know, that's what it says over in Hebrews, looking unto Jesus, Hebrews 12, He's looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith, that we can trust him even when it seems like, hey, this thing is going to be turned upside down. God will always provide vision. He'll always provide insight and concept, and he'll always provide the provision that you'll need every time. Now, I don't know if that's you tonight. I don't know if that's you that's got that type of priorities out of whack in a way that you, you're putting other stuff before God and before your family. Let's make the right investments. Vision will be there. God will always, the second thing I'll say here since I'm on this spiel, 
that God will always give you more vision than you're able to achieve in your lifetime. See, a lot of times we're, 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 we're so uh, vested in uh, completing this assignment that God has on our lives and we don't realize that God never intended for us to complete it. That it's, it's, it's until Jesus come back, this assignment is. That God is wanting us to invest in others who are able to carry the vision on. That's the key. Understanding that now helps you to keep things in right priori priorities and, uh, or keep our priorities straight and keep things in right perspective as we journey through life. Yes, admittedly, COVID took away some time, but he also said he will restore the years that the pommel worm and the canker worm ate from you, that the disaster took from you. Look for God to be the uh, Jehovah Gamola, the Lord God of recompense and restore, the one that will restore all things to you that you have lost. My God, this is, this is I hope, is, is getting down into your inner man, that there's no loss in your life, there's no lack in your life that you have to feel like you're overwhelmed and full of anxiety to, to, to I got to complete this. I've lost this much time and I've got I've to do more now so I can catch up. But just realize you're still on time. You're still on time. Because here's the deal. God, one of my favorite scriptures, God will make everything beautiful in his time. You're still on time. You're still on time. So don't feel like you've got to push your vision and your purpose before God and push it before your family. Listen to what it says over in Colossians chapter 16. I'm sorry, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 through 25. And then I'll go down to verse number, chapter number 4, verse 1 through 3. Now, this scripture is talking about the order of family and, and, uh, and, it, and it bleeds out into the work life, okay? It's, it's family first and then it bleeds out into the uh, vision and bleeds out into purpose. But it helps us to see how God hath arranged life and what's most meaningful, and what's, what should be priority. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read all of this so that you can see and hear what, sh what should be priority and how God developed out man's life so that we can get things back in right priority. Okay, all right, so Colossians 3, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Verse 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Here it is. Verse 18. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, notice the order. Spouse, first, husband, wife, spouse, first. And then it comes down to children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. So notice the order of things, husband, wife, children, okay? Remember, you're not married, you know, if you, you're a parent, then your children come next. Uh, if you, you're not a parent, then your parents will, will be that persons or persons that will come next, okay? But notice the order here, wives, husbands, spouses, then the children, and then it goes down and talks to the, to the parents. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, now, now we shift it from the house. In, in, verse, in verse number 22, we leave the house. In the house, parents and the children in the house. Got it? Remember over in 1 Timothy, we just read to you about your parents and taking care of them and all of that. Parents come underneath children once once you are, uh, you're married and you have children. When you're married, spouse comes before parents. I know that's kind of heavy for a lot of people to understand it, but spouse comes before parents. You are a, you are a Christian home by yourself. Y your parents are no longer have that authority over your head once you're married. I think that's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and 7. The Bible takes you through that, about you know a, a, a young person marrying and it, you're released from that authority of your parents being over your head. Now you become a Christian home. And now you become an authority in your own house. 
So it's, it's, it's spouse, then the children. Now let's see what vision looks like. Let's see what purpose looks like. Let's see what career looks like, okay? That's my point. That's my point. My point is prioritizing in your world. Yeah, we know you got to go to work, but there's something greater in priority with your spouse, and there's something greater in priority with your, with your children, and there's something greater in priority with your parents and those that you have to care for. Yeah, yeah. Work, work is going to work itself out. It's going to work itself out. It's going to work itself out. I promise you, it's going to work itself out. You will never lack for any good or beneficial thing. You know, when you go to work and you say, well, Pastor, I can't take off my job to, to take care of my parents. That's why you have leave time. That's why you, you have leave time. That's why you don't, you don't use all your leave time up doing stuff. And, you know, I call it lying leave. You know, you, you're lying about why you're taking off and, and you, you're just abusing the whole system. I know it's your time, but you never know when you're going to need that time for your spouse or you're going to need that time for your children or that time to care for your spouse. Man, I'm preaching good. I'm preaching good through here because that's the priorities that we have to realign for ourselves so that we can shift in a way that God is back at the top, our families are second, and then, watch this, comes those that are a part of our extended family. Verse 22. Servants, let's go to work. Here it is. Here, we're going to go to work, going outside the house. Servants, Obey in all things your master. Now, some people get this all twisted in their mind because it's, it's the King James Version of it. It's not talking about slavery. This is talking about those who are employed. Say, employee, be obedient to your supervisors according to the flesh, not with eye service or as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it with all your heart as if you were directly working under God and not under men. Knowing that of the Lord, you shall receive the reward of your inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And there is no respect of person. Colossians 4, verse 1 through 3. Masters, this is talking to the supervisors, or business owners, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Continue in prayer, watching the same with thanksgiving, with all prayer, all praying, also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mysteries of Christ for which I am also in bonds. That's Paul talking to the church at Colossae, okay? All right, so notice what I wanted you to get tonight, especially from those two uh, 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 chapters, uh, uh, Colossians chapter 3 and chapter 4. The order of things, the order of things that making sure family is good. Make sure your spouse good. Make sure your children good. Make sure your parents are good. If you got aunts or big mamas or, or great grandparents, make sure they're good. Make sure they're good. Take all, all the stuff that we may want to do at work and all the stuff that we got prioritized out around our vision and our purpose, all that stuff's going to be there. It's going to be there. You're going to have more work than you could ever sign up for. But through this pandemic, we've got to put God first our families have to be second, and those that are part of our extended family has to be a part of uh, the second place. Got to be. You can call it 2A, 2B, 2C, whatever you want to call it, but the scriptures is teaching us to right shift our priorities. Now listen to this, what Jesus said. He that will find his life has to lose it. Yes, you and I are not the number one portion of our lives. We're not the number one portion. God is, our family is, we make sacrifices for our family. We make sacrifices for all that God has called us to with our children, with our spouses, with our parents, and all of that is important. Listen to me. I know there has to be a well you. You have to be well. How, Pastor, if I put all of this before me, how am I going to be well? It's reciprocal. See, when you, you, you put... God first, your family, and then you. And all, all it does is just, it just, it's in a cycle. It's a reciprocal. It, it returns. God empowers you to become everything that they will need. You become everything that they will need, and in turn, God will provide you with everything you need to be strong.
and capable and willing and energized to be able to make sure you take care of the people that love you and take care of you the most, okay? Now, outside of your family, now put your vision in place and add other people to it, but at least you got your priorities back in order and you just watch God begin to multiply and do great exploits in your life. God first, family second, vision third. Amen. I pray that you learn something tonight. I pray that you will receive it as well. Father, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for helping us to prioritize in our lives. Thank you, Father, that we're losing our lives, losing our selfish nature so that we can become selfless to be a blessing to those that you send in our world. Thank you, Father, that we're good to each other as spouses. We're good to each other, to our children. We're good to our parents. And so, Father, I pray that you will help each and every person that hears this message. Help them to shift in their priorities, shift their perspectives, shift their position in a way, Father, that we will honor you and bring your kingdom glory. Thank you for empowering us. Thank you for helping us that we can lose ourselves, that we may be able to find ourselves in Christ Jesus. We glorify you for it. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Well, if you want to join this church tonight, you can. You click on that membership link, and it is provided for you there, and you're able to join this church anywhere in the world. If you want to give tonight, you can text to give. That information is on the screen. Follow those instructions, and you will be able to text to give. If you want to give via the website, you're able, if you're able to, just click on that link that uh, says give, and it'll lead you over to our website where you're able to give via the website. Praise God, praise God. And if you want prayer tonight, submit your prayer request, and our prayer team will reach back out to you, stand in faith for you for your special miracle that God wants to do in the midst of your life. Well, God bless you until Sunday, 8 o'clock a.m. and 10 o'clock a.m. Remember, Sunday school is at 9 a.m. Sunday school is made available both here on campus in the multipurpose room as well as made available via uh, online. I can't think of it. What is, what is it called? Online. Somebody help me. What is it called? Zoom. That's it. It's uh, via Zoom. So Sunday school, 9 o'clock a.m. It's available on Zoom as well as in the classroom. Praise God. Well, stay in the faith, and we will see you on uh, Sunday. God bless you. We believe your word. We receive your blessing. We believe everything that you say. Amen. It is so. It is so. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.
for you. He is for you. 